Cassandra Xavier reading from my new survivor fiction novel, Viva Ja, part two. Kathy was short and white and Midwestern, Roberto tall, brown, and Latin. This pleased Viv's penchant for contrast and variety. She viewed the world and her surroundings as a playground for art and lovemaking. It all was, or could be, if one so desired and enacted, a buffet of choices and possibilities. Plus, she, she humorously noted, when the relationships have run their course, you have tons of house and pet sitters at the ready. Although it wasn't necessary for both Kathy and Roberto to know one another prior to staying with and checking in on Viv's sole dependent, as again is common with lesbian and poly folk, they did meet. It was in New York City when years ago they all lived there, trying, respectively, to advance in their artistic and entertainment performance careers. Kathy was a stand-up comic with a medical background that often provided her prime source of income. She was a trained nurse who also wrote health books for adolescents, nursing student guides, and sometimes still actually plied her non-comedy trade. Roberto was an actor, writer, filmmaker, director, and a real renaissance man who, unlike Kathy, was not effective in securing regular income by non-artistic means. He was involved in the Latino community, working on a Spanish-language film and living for free in a basement as his only pay. Viv had gone through similar employment situations, as both Kathy and Roberto did, many years of retail and restaurant work full-time, paid the rent and bills, while she grew enough to be a full-time artist who got depressed doing anything but or working for anyone other than herself. Viv realized her 20s were spent honing her craft as a fine artist while working non-arts related jobs for others. Her 30s were spent doing more of her art and pulling away from the full-time paycheck job model. She was a figure model, a phone psychic, a bike messenger, etc. And now, in her youthful 40s, after leaving, after leaving, after learning how to navigate the arts grant systems and stay in counseling and treatment for the bipolar disorder that made ordinary living so challenging, let alone being a full-time working artist who also happens to be queer and poly, Viv finally had the long-time stable and financial success she longed for. Viv also had a lot of pain from her past, a childhood and adolescence filled with psychic oppression and physical and sexual abuse. She was an incest survivor and, and she was an incest survivor. And this morning, as she stroked her feline companion, she realized suffering was a way to pay back her parents for hurting her. Father for abuse, mother for denial. Some part of her thought this actually made sense. After all, they still worried. They still wanted her to be self-sufficient. As she recalled the years not so long ago that she was struggling financially in one housing crisis after another, that some of that may have been about the good feeling that comes from returning misery to those who have plied you with it. There was a time in her teens that Viv was punished for staying out all night. She was actually on the porch sleeping, afraid to come home so late. By porch on night, right, afraid to knock on the door so late, um, by being forced to sleep on the laundry room fo floor for two weeks. Years later, when she was an adult, in yet another uncomfortable home situation, she realized she was sleeping on the floor again, proverbially, although she was sleeping on a mattress that was indeed directly on the floor. She realized she was bringing into her present the past which did heap upon her many painful moments of being mistreated and undervalued. She saw what home had meant to her, that aside from some few and potent inst instances, most of her experiences of living in or trying to create home alone or with others involved 
a not insignificant amount of pain. At that moment, Viv decided to live and create only in and from the present to examine any old limiting beliefs about what she was worthy of insofar as home life was concerned and to begin a process of healing and remembering. She called upon all her powerful women friends for a gathering at her home out of which she would soon be moving and into her next destiny. All right, well, that's what I have so far of Viva Ja. I dedicate that to April Sinclair, whose first book, Coffee Will Make You Black, I thought about as I started sh decided to share this on YouTube. You know, because um, in the olden days, you know, the publishing industry has changed just like the recording industry has changed. And in the olden days, um, the publishing industry was such that, okay, so April would read parts of her novel in coffee houses and gatherings. And it just created such a buzz that that got her attention and she got the publishing deal. Today it doesn't really happen as much like that, so much as it happens as people are self-publishing a lot and they're also sharing their work on YouTube and they're really creating a lot of blogs. People get deals through music and through writing way differently than they used to the olden days. Gone are the days of holding your material until you find a publisher. You share what you have. And you do, you know, you do book proposals and you do things like that. So, so this is my coffee house sharing parts of the novel. <laughs> um, at some point, I will be, you know, reading parts of it, reading my work out at literary events again, like I used to. Um, but you know, YouTube is a wonderful venue. I absolutely love it. So I'm really thrilled and privileged and honored to share my work with you here. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, check back in soon. Okay, viva ja, ciao.